Hey everyone, this is Sega here. Thanks for joining me here in the broom closet. I thought I'd bring you outside today since it was a glorious Southern California morning, but I'm probably gonna end up melting here in a moment because my coffee is so hot and the sun is so warm and I'm still in my pajamas, so let's do this. <laughs> I thought I'd take part in the Pagan Challenge, trying to answer some of the questions that come up each week, and it'll give me a little motivation to do some uh, some more videos. And I, as you can tell, I'm not very good at talking in front of the camera, so there's a lot of cutting. There's always been cutting in my videos. But the first topic, I believe, on the Pagan Challenge is where and when did you find your call to this path, to the Pagan lifestyle? and. As I said in um, a couple of my videos, I know I've covered this before, but as part of the challenge, I'm going to make um, a separate folder for all of these. So, uh, and I want to shout out to Ember Honey Raven. Actually, I found this on hers, and I know she found it from somebody else. So, um, I'll just link to hers, and she, she's kind of who I'm getting all my information from at this point, as far as each week. And I know I've covered this before in my other videos, but I'll just talk quickly about how I fell into the pagan, witchy, occult fascination. And uh, as you know, it, pro it all started when I was in grade school and my best friend and I watched Practical Magic, we watched The Craft, uh, Witches of Eastwick, all of that jazz. So as uh, little tweens running around, we weren't so much into in sync as we were into spells. So that is where it all stemmed from. Uh, however, so back then, she and I are both very artsy. Um, she's a Scorpio, I'm a Gemini, so we work pretty well together. And um, back then we started A Book of Shadows and that was my first, I was like, oh, you can, you can have art and work this craft at the same time. So I thought that was pretty fascinating that, um, and as you know from my channel, it's come back full circle. That being said, she and I worked on a Book of Shadows for a long time, probably from seventh grade to ninth grade. She's about nine months younger than I am, so we are in different classes. So um, when I was in ninth grade, she was still in elementary school, unfortunately, so I didn't get to see her. But um, that's kind of when it all faded away. It, I was still really interested in it. I remember my once all the rumors started flying around, and I don't know, I don't remember if it was a book my mom found, or if it was the, the Book of Shadows Megan and I were working on, but my mom found it and was quite upset. And um, I just remember being, she, her asking me to come into her room and to have a talk, and she was just, because being raised Roman Catholic, that was, that was um, a big deal for her, unfortunately. So I, I think I broke her heart a little bit um, during that point, but um, that's that's what kids did. That's kids are exploring. They're learning. You know, you especially in my little tiny town, and you don't have a choice. This is your religion. This is your um, family. These are your values. Like you don't you don't pick it. So you know, tiptoeing outside those parameters is a little scary to the old school folk. Let me take a sip. The years are passing, I go through high school, and I always had in the back of my mind that there is something else, there's something more. And I would flip-flop back and forth, even um, after moving out to California. This was a big turning point moving out here. It really shifted everything, my, my way of viewing things, my way of viewing people, and their, their, um, their mindsets and their religions. Uh, so when I came out here, where was I going? Let me back up a step. So in Pennsylvania, that's where I started to do a lot of yoga. I started getting out into nature. My brothers and I would go on lots of hikes and really just tuning back into the natural rhythm of things and appreciating the silence. I think that in my, my later years really, really um, triggered a different mindset. Oh, I was talking about flip-flopping. So. Uh, in Pennsylvania, I'd go to church every Sunday with my family, 
and I was an altar server. I had to serve every Croatian mass. So that being said, we there there's a lot of guilt that goes along with that. So I'll try to skip ahead and rummage out through, through some of the gray areas. I came out here and my eyes were opened. You know, I really, really wanted to try to learn more about yoga and meditation and this new way of thinking in nature and um, peace, love, harmony, all that stuff because the world needs more of it, basically. And I think when I came out here, I had met a few people, I had gone to a few meditation classes and um, through those, I discovered somebody who did a mediumship class. And through that, is when I started to understand my sensitive sensitivity to some um, frequencies and learn all about the occult basically, but it was through a safe environment. And I felt safe at the time because um, it incorporated some of the Christian prayer aspects, you know, you call, and this is, this is not just strictly Christian or strictly pagan, you know, covering yourself with, um, uh, protection and white light and asking the God and Goddess to protect you, um, whether it's God and Goddess or Holy Father, Holy Mother, um, Holy Spirit, whatever. So I felt safe doing it um, because of that. And it was really hard because I'm trying to explore this, um, this mediumship and my own skill as far as what I'm capable of doing. Am I able to um, get into that zone, into that contact, and really, really uh, understand, truck going by, understand that there are other things out there besides going to church every Sunday and not having a connection to that. So I was doing the yoga, I was doing the meditation, I was doing doing the mediumship, and I had to move you guys over a little bit because the sun is moving, moving steadily across the camera. And throughout all this, I kept coming back to, okay, uh, maybe I just need to learn a little more about the scripture. And when I was out here, I remember my cousin sending me a study Bible, and I thought it was the coolest thing. You know, I really I wanted to know what was the big draw of it. I never got it. In Catholic school, uh, we t had religion class, but we aren't, especially, in my environment, we didn't do a whole lot of scripture. So I studied that, and I think because of the person I was with and our situation, my love and my understanding of the craft wasn't taking flight. And when I would try to meditate or I'd try to get my cards out to do tarot, uh, or I'd say I was going to, excuse me, a women's circle, it was. I, I got scoffed at, basically, excuse me, and um, it wasn't it wasn't a supportive environment, let's just say. So skipping ahead, um, my divorce uh, goes through, and I moved to this beautiful location here in Southern California. And moving here, I was already interested in tarot and oracle, and that just continued and I know I had done another video about all my the list of my um, my interests as far as the occult goes so I just continued to go further and deeper I've always been connected with the moon so I'd follow the moon phases and that's when I started to journal and draw in the book of shadows that I have now it's just a sketchbook but in the beginning I was doing the moon phases what my goals were at that time the releasing the gaining the waxing the waning and that is how it it basically started so uh, I I remember doing the moon phases and then following this calendar I noticed okay um, Imolk was coming up what was that so that's when I started to really introduce myself into the wheel of the year and I think this is gonna be another video coming up but so I don't want to get too involved with it so that's really this whole um, year has been pretty amazing actually so uh, Ostara last year was the first time that I had done any ritual any um, grounding spell anything on my own in honor of the turning of the season so that's how I really got into the pagan lifestyle and being here and being with the person I'm with has 
it's totally a supportive, positive atmosphere. It doesn't matter how many stones I bring home and it doesn't matter how many uh, tarot cards I have on the shelf. Uh, and if I want to explore more, I know that my partner is, is totally fine with it as long as I'm not slaughtering animals or, well, even the dancing naked thing, I feel like he'd be fine with, but you know what I'm saying? So uh, that is really where my story began and I'm so glad that I've ended up here because all, it doesn't matter if you're pagan, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, Hoodoo, the message is the same. You just give love show respect where it's due, and be kind to others. That's basically what my philosophy is lately. And um, be true to yourself, be strong. I'm trying a lot harder to be stronger. So everyone, thanks for joining me. I hope this video answered a lot of the questions. I might have a few other things to sneak in at a later time, but I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks for joining me now that the sun is blinding you. Adios, amigos, bye.